Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be thinking through the top dollar mint errors worth over a thousand dollars. So that's right, these coins were minted with the face value of one dollar, and most of them are super recent. So the characterization of a mint error that means that during the production process there was a significant mess up in the production. So it's not like you know it's a super old. Uh, dollar and it's only rare because you know it's super old this is actually no the mint messed up and as a result we have something worth way more than it was intended uh, you know just to be spent for a dollar so there's some crazy stuff that I'm gonna walk you through uh, it has to be over a thousand dollars in terms of the price that it sold for at auction but I made a presentation let's get right into it um, this is not the only similar video that I will have done or will be doing in the future but let's take a look at some of the coolest dollars ever produced by accident. And our first error is going to be something that does not immediately look super crazy, but I think that it's a really good reminder out there for all of the collectors. And it's a 1972S proof 69 deeper ultra cameo, but it's got medallic alignment. So somebody was paying attention, and I'm sure that there are a lot of these coins out there where people have not paid attention, but uh, theoretically, and maybe we'll, you'll see it in some of the future ones, but the, uh, the coin, the reverse, should be sort of upside down when you flip it, where to, to get a right side up image, um, you'd have to be flipping the coin over, but instead, instead of being coin aligned, like, you know, a lot of the American coins are, this has a different alignment where you need to rotate it on its kind of around the vertical as opposed to uh, over the hor horizontal to get the upright image. And instead of being like a $25 coin, it sold for $1,680 in a 2021 heritage auction. After that, we have a Jackson presidential dollar that was a you know a test piece or a die adjustment strike when they're getting the striking uh, frequency and the striking pressure exactly right. It also has missing edge lettering, so there's a lot wrong with it. Um, and it only sold for $1,380. That's a little low for these sorts of presentations when I'm making them. But I actually think that it's interesting. I'm personally, I like coins that are from a value. This is just my own opinion. But, you know, whether it's a statehood quarter, because there's a lot of people who collect maybe their own states, or president where somebody who's a big fan of Andrew Jackson would want to own the most significant Andrew Jackson presidential dollar that's been struck, I think that this is a fun sort of example of that, and maybe it would be worth a little bit more today. I'm not, you know, making a comment on Jackson himself, uh, but I'm sure that there are a lot of Jackson fans out there, and it would be conceivable that multiple of them would want to own the most significant coin that he's struck on. After that, we have this more valuable Proof 63 Cameo double struck coin. Um, you can see that it rotated a significant amount, probably within the collar, and you get the second strike appearing. You can see it both in the outline on um, Ike's head, as well as in this extra we in his neck. Uh, some faint traces of an old, old liberty, but super neat coin, um, and, and it, people paid up a long time ago for it. After that, we have one of these transitional errors. So, um, you know, the 40% silver came in. They were striking, you know, proof coins, but they were also striking some, I believe, business strike uh, 1976S coins. Um, so somehow one of those... Maybe it was the die that got misplaced, or maybe it was the planchet more likely that just made its way over to the Denver Mint and was struck with the 1977D dies, which were never intended to strike 40% uh, silver Eisenhowers. And as a result, you know, it's a significant wrong planchet error. That's going to be a $12,900 sale in 2014. Then we've got a similar, and I think that this is going to be a theme, but there's some really cool concoctions different planchets that got struck. They brought back Susan B. Anthony in 1999, uh, though they would transition over to Sacagawea and other dollars um, not too long after, but they they somehow struck one of the Susan B. Anthony dies onto the obviously gold-colored Sacagawea planchet, resulting in this $15,600 coin. Uh, just another example of a wrong planchet error. 
And I think that this one's pretty cool because there's a fair amount of, you know, silver where it should have been clad, but a more, you know, it's not as often that in the same denomination we change the um, composition that makes a meaningful difference in terms of the color of the coin. So that's why I think that this is special. Um, then we have this coin, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, it, it's similar in terms of how it's been double struck, where the we appears in the neck. Uh, you've got the outline above um, above Ike's head, but it's on a two gram aluminum planchet. So maybe it was from 1974 when we were testing out aluminum scents, but you know it's way too small for the coin. Most of, you know it's less than 10 percent of the average weight of one of these Eisenhowers, and it sold for six thousand bucks. So uh, it was a good good amount that it sold for, but it's still kind of weird and worthy of this list. After that, we've got this wild mated pair uh, of a PCGS graded American Silver Eagle group where there was a struck through error uh, on one of them over here because it was struck through an emery disc and then this one is literally on an emery disc and the explanation on heritage was that the emery discs are thin round granular and adhesive backed uh, discs that are affixed to buffing wheels um, which would be used to help prepare dyes, but somehow one of these emery discs with an unpeeled backing covered one of the planchets, and that's what happened here. So this side looks pretty normal. Um, you know, there's no impression here, but a very clear impression on this emery disc over here, and it survived nicely and just created one of the most unique mint errors that I've literally ever seen in my life or thought of. Um, how often do you get a coin struck on... You know, I don't even know what that would totally be made of, um, but it survived well, and that's that's pretty special on, about it too. So, eleven hundred or eleven thousand two hundred bucks was what it was paid for back in two thousand six, and I'd be curious to see what it would sell for today. Then we've got the twenty fourteen D. You know, it's a gold dollar, um, kind of a Sacagawea presidential dollar mule with a Sacagawea or Native American obverse, and then the presidential reverse. And I think it's interesting that was probably out, it was it was discovered, I believe, in a bank bag, sold for 84000 bucks by somebody who paid a dollar for it. Um, it probably went around because people don't know the Sacagawea, you know, what that's supposed to look like that much um, in terms of you know, being super comfortable with these coins and the differences between a presidential dollar. You know, if you're not looking closely, probably not going to find it, but it also gives hope. I always like to make the top end ones where it's like, okay, I'm not telling you that it's likely or even close to it that you'll find one, but it's a doable, I mean, somebody found it and, and that's really exciting to me. So seeing that somebody found this and either, you know, if they, they could have had a super unbelievable discovery coin in their collection or sell it for a amount of money that will really make a difference in their life that's pretty special about coins in addition to just the you know being exciting as art and as history and as a collectible um, and then we got this coin which is a Sacagawea dollar that was struck on feeder fingers which feed the planchets I believe as they're getting struck somehow it got detached and got started to get struck a bunch of different times you can see the different impressions um, you know, it's not a coin planchet, so it's not that circular, though it seems to have been uh, getting more circular as it got struck, and it was sold for $10,900. Um, interesting, that's AU58. I doubt that this circulated, um, but maybe the mint employee decided instead of scrapping it to put the scrap in his pocket or her pocket or <laughs> whose, whose ever pocket it was. And then lastly, uh, I've made videos on this before, but still a good reminder this one's a little more obvious because the statehood quarter does not have a one dollar on the back of it and vice versa um, there's been less than 20 but still like 15 of these found they come up from time to time this was the nicest example and it sold for hundred twenty thousand dollars i want to say that there's a collector of them named bolak who owns a lot of them but the uh or boland or something like that uh, but this is a super cool error very significant and findable people were finding this so i look forward to the next sort of muled coins and this is i think cooler because there are like 15 of them out there whereas the this coin there's only like 
this is the only one. So it's a little more exciting when multiple were released and released out into circulation because it lets you do a little bit of extra hunting. But with that being said, good luck doing so. Um, a lot of non-findable ones here that are just cool to learn about and maybe a little bit to educate in terms of findable stuff. I think that this is slept on. You know, you, there's maybe some that are messed up with this um, metallic alignment as opposed to coin alignment or just misaligned dies. You know, that's an error that's a little more boring to search for, I think, because you're not really looking for varieties. Uh, it's just how are the coins aligned, but there's enough of the rotated or totally wrongly aligned dies where you can make some finds from time to time. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I also have a website, treasuretownyt.com, where you should go so that you can learn more about coins as well as what's happening on the channel and possibly find a place to sell your coins and collectibles. I also want to talk about some of my other projects like coinmeltprice.com, which shows precious metals prices as well as the melt values of coins containing those precious metals, both US and world. I also have coinsmetalscards.com, which will develop into a full marketplace, as well as a new source for coins, metals, cards, as the name might suggest. And then treasuretowncoins.com, which long term will be my coin dealing entity separate from the channel. And lastly, whatsthegrade.com, which will be a stickering service for already certified collectibles where you can get a approval or verification of the grade on the holder. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos.